better check it out. Uh, also, Wednesday at 6 o'clock, there will be a joint meeting in Dorcas Parlor for the Trustees and Nominations Committee. You notice that in your bulletin you received, uh, uh, you see this about the youth group mission trip. Please read through this. This is very important. It's about the mission trip that they're taking. Also on the other side kind of shows about the estimated cost of it. It's very important to know this so that you can help out uh, where it's needed. Recipes for the Illinois River District Cookbook. How about that one? You've heard about this. This is a project for Kiwani First. It's shaping up to be a very nice cookbook, but there's still time for recipes to be submitted for the cookbook. We're working on getting them sorted through, but there is still time for a few more. Check your recipe box and give them to Pat Dameron, Bonnie, Ma Bonnie Nash, or leave them at the office with Randy. Time is short, but if you want your recipe to be included in the cookbook, there is there is still a small window of opportunity. And, and the last one that we had, I go through that thing every once in a while and, and find something. And I, I remember a couple years ago, Marie Munson, if any of you, you remember Marie Munson, she has this little uh, recipe of a, of a coffee cake. And it was as simple as can be. And, and I found that in there, and it's delicious. So get those recipes in. And finally, uh, whole sponsor forms will be available to, uh, downstairs following the service. This sponsorship will be for the golf play day on June the 22nd for the Relay for Life. Your help in sponsoring a whole will be appreciated. We want to try to wrap this up as, as best we can. Uh, individual whole sponsors, uh, we can still take them probably up until a week before the uh, tournament. But businesses, we need to get them in uh, by the... By next or uh, this coming week so please do that are we ready to to worship the lord let's let's taste his water forgot to put this in the bulletin, but following the uh, time of friendship before the second hymn, uh, some of our children will be coming forward to sing for us this morning. Would you please turn in your hymnal to page 76. Our opening prayer is entitled Trinity Sunday, page 76. Let us pray together. Holy, Holy God, God, you have, you have given, given us, us grace. grace. By, by the, the confession, confession of the faith of your holy church, to acknowledge the mystery of the eternal trinity, and in the power of your divine majesty, to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see in your eternal glory, one God, now and forever. Amen. My hymn of celebration this morning is number 64, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Please stand as you are as you are able and join in singing. <clears throat>
act of praise this morning is found on page 80. We'll be reading responsibly Canticle of the Holy Trinity, and we will be using the sung response wherever the red R appears, or maybe you think the R is brown, whichever the case might be. And uh, Teresa is going to play it through one time, and then we will sing it through once and begin the reading. Sing praise to God who We praise you, O God. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The white robed army of martyrs praise you. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became incarnate to set us free, you humbly accepted the virgin's womb. You overcame the sin of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. It's my fault for not communicating with her before church started. <laughs> Please take a few moments to greet those around you today. Now this is the um, pre-K and first graders, is that right? Kindergarten. Pre-K and kindergarten. So if you're in pre-K kindergarten Sunday school class, we'd like for you to come forward so you can help sing.
Our nursery offering hymn is number 85, We Believe in One True God. And once again, the nursery offering is going to our vac- uh, Vacation Bible School. Eternal and everlasting God, as we bow before you once again this day, we give you thanks and praise your holy name, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All praise and honor and glory and majesty and wisdom belong unto you and to you alone. God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we are grateful for the nation in which we live and for all the freedoms that we're able to enjoy. But we especially give you thanks that we are able to be gathered together in this place to worship you as our conscience dictates under the authority of Jesus Christ as led by your Holy Spirit. God, we are grateful for all of the men and women who serve in our armed forces throughout the world many of them putting themselves in the midst of danger. And we pray for them even as we give you thanks, asking that you would uh, keep them safe, asking that you might uh, bring them home safely and bring them home soon. God, we are aware that there are men and women throughout the ages who have given their ultimate sacrifice on behalf of our nation and behalf of other nations, seeking freedom and liberty 
and peace for all. And we pray, O oh God, that you would draw near to the families of everyone. Almost everyone here in this place has probably been affected by the death of a loved one in military service one way or another in one generation or another. And so we pray for your comfort and for your strength. God, we thank you for uh, people who have guided us over the years. Uh, grandparents, parents, aunts and uncles, teachers, uh, pastors, Sunday school teachers. And there are others, God, other saints who in the living of their lives and in the sharing of their faith have helped to shape each and every one of us this day. God, we pray that you would draw near to every family who has been touched by death in recent days, in recent weeks, in recent months. We pray especially for the family of David Craddock as they mourn his death and others who have died recently. On this Memorial Day weekend, as we remember all of those who have died May you give of your strength, may you give of your comfort, may you give of your grace and love, and may everyone know that in every circumstance and in every situation, your grace is indeed sufficient for their every need. God, as we think about you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we think about the many ways in which we want to be more like you. We especially look to Jesus and the way in which he loved, the way in which he forgave, the way in which he gave himself for us. And we want to be more like him. We want to be more holy. We want to be more forgiving. We want to be more merciful. We want to be more patient. We want to be more loving. Help us, God, to yield ourselves more fully to the working of your Spirit in our lives, that indeed in all things we may reflect your glory and may indeed all things be done to your honor. God, there are many other needs. There are many, many, many other things that we could express our gratitude for. But we simply lift our prayers unto you, declaring that we love you, God. You have claimed us for yourself, and we are grateful, and we love you more than we can express. All of these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, even as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As our ushers begin to receive the... Boy, you guys were right on top of it today, weren't you? <laughs> Hear these words from Psalm 28. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Once again, God, as we bring these our gifts, it is done out of gratitude and it is done out of love for you. And we pray that you'd pour out your blessings upon them. Use them to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of his love and of his sacrifice for all people, so that others might come to faith in him. Bless these gifts. Bless the givers. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As Lisa comes forward to uh, prepare the introduction of our graduates, would the congregation please turn in your bulletin insert to the recognition of graduates service. <coughs> When I call your name down, please come forward. I apologize. There's a couple people off the list. My list did not get all the way to Paul, and there's a couple of names missed. Please come forward when you call your name. When I call your name, Jacob Anderson, Katie Lane, Dylan Murphy. These are our eighth grade graduates. High school, Mary Abbott, Mark Breedlove, Samantha Brody, A.J. Lane, Margaret Thompson, and college, Jeannie Abbott, and Adam Breedlove. Also with graduates are Ben Craddock and Roger Craddock. Are there any graduates that the congregation is aware of that we do not have? Just call out the names if you want to. Turn in your recognition of the graduates to the call to worship. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let us worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal, Eternal God, God, the light, light of the of minds, the minds that, that know you, the joy of the hearts, hearts that, love that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you, grant, grant us so to know you that we may truly love you. Love you. So and so to, to love, love you that we that may we fully, fully serve you, you to, to the, the honor, honor and glory of your holy name. name. Amen. I'd like to congratulate everyone on their graduations, and I'm going to come through and shake your hand and hand you your gifts, okay? Thank you. And then remain up in place, if you would, please. Alice Bartlett's going to come forward at this time to present the Wayne Bartlett Scholarship. I guess Donna 
to join me because she's on the committee with me in choosing these, the fine, fine people that we have here. And I asked my daughters who are both, well, one was a teacher but retired and the other was still teaching, and I asked them to critique and they made a few changes in what I had had to say, so please forgive me as I read this. <laughs> I want to congratulate this class of 2013. Your church family is so proud of your achievements. We wish you the best as you start on with your new endeavors. During my husband's 25 years at Kiwani High School, he devoted many hours to help mold his students into fine, successful citizens. And this is one of them that he worked with. He was so happy to hear from them and tried to keep up with their successes. In his memory, this year, we are going to split the Wayne Bartlett Scholarship into two $250 scholarships. And I'd like to have Mary Abbott and Samantha Brody please come. Jeannie's going to fill in yeah, for her think, sister. Mary, I think Mary is off on, a, on the boundary waters. And I, I hope it's not too cold for her. But this is for Mary. Mary was the valvictory, co valvictorian of Weathersfield, and she's going to the U of I to study electrical engineering. Thank you, Jeannie, for taking that for you. And Jeannie was the first one that got her first scholarship, so this is wonderful to see her. Again. And then for Samantha, she also is an excellent student, and she's going to go uh, to uh, Illinois State University to study to be a special ed teacher. So thank you very much, and you're both you. most deserving. Thank you so thank very, very much. Thank you very much. Hang loose, graduates. We're not done with you yet. If you do know of other graduates, we will try to include the in complete list in the upcoming newsletter. So if you can get those names to Randy by Tuesday uh, this week, we would appreciate that. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, you are the giver of all gifts. And one of the wonderful gifts that you give to us is the gift of knowledge and the gift of learning. And we give you thanks and we praise your name for these graduates, for this uh, place in their life that they have arrived at. They've worked hard to make the achievements that they have, whether it's to graduate from eighth grade or high school or college. And we give you thanks for those landmarks in their lives. And God, we pray for them as they continue their journey. Some of them will be continuing their education. Some of them may go into the workforce. Some of them may be going into the military service. Uh, some of them may be a little bit uncertain about what their future holds and what their immediate plans are. We just pray that you will continue to guide and direct and fill each one with your wisdom. And we pray that they might continue to live lives of faith and lives of faithfulness as followers of Jesus. Wherever they go, we pray that even as we pray you would do so for all of our lives, that you would use them as your servants. May they be light, may they be leaven, may they be salt in our world. We ask this once again in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Graduates, congratulations to each and every one of you for your achievement, and thank you. And now as the congregation sends you off with a round of applause, you may return to your seats. Testament scripture lesson this morning is from Genesis chapter 1, and I'll be reading verses 1 and 2 and verses 26 through 31. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. 
Then God said, Let us make man in our image and our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. And our epistle lesson is from the fifth chapter of Romans, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
It is time for the children to go to junior church, and as they're going, we'll sing hymn number 174, His Name is Wonderful. you've forgotten, this is the last Sunday of May, which means it's the last Sunday of the current choir season. The choir will be taking the summer off, but it's been a great season, choir. It's been a great year. You've done a wonderful job, and we want to thank you for the many ways in which you have shared your gifts and your talents with us, as well as with God. Thank you. The choir likes to take the summer off, and our Sunday school teachers like to take the summer off. And uh, so remember, no children and youth Sunday school uh, for this summer, and the class that I teach in Price Lounge will not be meeting. But for those of you in my class, if you want to go to Sunday school class, there are at least three other adult Sunday school classes that I think will continue to meet through the summer. So you've got some place you can go if you so desire. Our gospel lesson is from the 16th chapter of John, verses 12 through 15. As Jesus uh, is continuing to prepare the disciples for his departure, here in the 16th chapter of John, he continues talking about the promised Holy Spirit that will be given to them. And he says in verse 12, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. Just about every church I've ever pastored over the last 39 plus years, there is a recurring question that happens. And that is, explain to us about the Trinity. I remember a few years ago, I uh, passed out sheets of paper in the bulletin and people could ask, write down any question they wanted me to answer in two or three Sundays from then. And one of the questions written by a man in his 40s was, talk about the Trinity. Explain the Trinity. Today is Trinity Sunday. You remember last week was Pentecost, the day that we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit to the disciples and then to the whole church. And today we lift up that somewhat mysterious, enigmatic doctrine of the Trinity. But the doctrine of the Trinity simply tries to explain the ways in which we experience God. We experience God as described there in Genesis 1, the creator of the universe. 
This God who is wholly other than we are. This God who is transcendent. Whose ways are not our ways. Whose thoughts are not our, way, our thoughts. Who is way beyond us somewhere up there. We experience that God is way up there. But we not only experience that God is way up there as creator and as father, but we also experience God in Jesus. As people of his own day experienced him, many of them experienced him to be God. They didn't understand it. There were those who accused Jesus of blasphemy when he said, The Father and I are one. There were others who rejected him for various reasons. But those who trusted in him and who followed in him said, This man is God. And we experience Jesus as God in the flesh lived among us. We experience him as redeemer. We experience him as son. We experience him as savior. We experience Jesus as God. But we also, even knowing that Jesus is now in heaven, seated next to God the Father, We also continue to experience Jesus, or God rather, all around us and inside of us. That God is not simply transcendent, far above and beyond us. God is also imminent. God is near us. God is in us. No matter where we go, we find God already there. That is God, the Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, indwelling within us. And because we experience God in all of those different ways, Some 1,600 years ago, 1,700 years ago, somewhere in there, somebody decided they better write it down as a doctrine. How do we explain this experience that we have? How can we talk about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit and help us to make sense of the many ways in which we experience God? John Wesley was asked one time to explain the Trinity, and he said something to the effect of, if you can tell me how there can be three candles in a room that generates one light, I may be able to explain to you how there can be three persons and one God. We may not be able to understand it in our mind. We may not be able to really clarify the thought processes but we know what we experience. And in our lives, we experience God the Father, the one who is beyond us. We experience God the Son who has come to live in our midst and to give his life for us. And we continue to experience the very presence of God living in our lives and being with us wherever we go. I read earlier this week, I get a daily email. I don't know exactly how I got on the email list. I don't know exactly where this comes from, but it's called Sound Bites. And one of the Sound Bites this year, this week, was a quote from Philip Yancey in the Bible Jesus read. Out of their tortured history, the Jews demonstrate the most surprising lesson of all. You cannot go wrong personalizing God. God is not a blurry power living somewhere in the sky, not an abstraction like the Greeks proposed, not a sensual superhuman like the Romans worshipped, and definitely not the absentee watchmaker of the deists. God is personal. 
He enters into people's lives, messes with families, shows up in unexpected places, chooses unlikely leaders, calls people to account. Most of all, God loves. That's our experience, isn't it? God loves. God is personal. And he wants to be in relationship with us. And he showed us the many ways in which he wants to be in relationship with us through God as creator, father, through God, redeemer, son, and God, sustainer, Holy Spirit. Not only on this Memorial Day weekend do we remember those who have died, both in service of their nation and also just simply family members and friends that we have loved who have also died, but as Don pointed out earlier in the, his announcement time, uh, we simply give thanks for our nation. And one of the things that we do when we give thanks for our nation is to realize that in gratitude for the nation in which we live and the freedoms that we're able to enjoy in this nation, we have a responsibility to be good citizens. We have a responsibility to live as grateful citizens of the United States. Well, that's also true about what our response should be about the ways in which God enters into our lives as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We experience God in all of those three different ways, so what should we do about it? Well, there's basically three different responses depending on where we are in our own faith journey. If we're not a Christian, our response should be to come to Jesus and receive him as our Lord and Savior. Jesus died for each and every one of us. That shows the love of God. That shows the forgiveness and the mercy of God. That Jesus died for me. That Jesus died for you. And if we aren't a Christian, our response to the ways in which God manifests himself to us is to come to him in faith in Jesus Christ. And to pray something like this. Father, God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I have messed up my life. I come seeking your love. I come seeking your forgiveness. Come into my heart save my life I confess you as Savior maybe we are a Christian but we've kind of strayed off the path for people who have not yet become a Christian they may want to hear the words of Jesus that he spoke to the fishermen come follow me and that should be our first response to follow Jesus. Maybe as a Christian, somewhere along the line, you made that profession of faith and you decided that you were going to follow Jesus, but somewhere along the line, you've decided to quit following Jesus. Or you'll follow Jesus when it's convenient to follow Jesus, and then you'll kind of go your own way when it's not convenient. Now, to be honest with you, if we're all honest with ourselves, we're all probably there a little bit of the way. When it's convenient, we'll follow. When it's not so convenient, we'll kind of go our own way. But maybe you're a Christian that you need to recommit your life. You need to rededicate your life as a follower of Jesus Christ. To take up the cross and to follow Jesus wherever he might lead. Or maybe you are a Christian and you think yourself to be pretty steadfast in your walk. And many of us are. We try to do the very best that we know how. We have every intention to be as faithful as we know how to be, as faithful as we know how to be, as faithful as we know how to be. 
We're trying to do everything that we can. There's nothing wrong with that. But Christian, today I want to encourage you to hear the words of this hymn. This hymn's about 100 years old. I thought of this hymn a couple of year, weeks ago in Bible study. We've been studying the book of Malachi in Wednesday morning Bible study. And, um, and in the book of Malachi, it talks about how the people are bringing their sacrifices to the temple to make to God, except they're bringing sick animals. They're bringing animals that have been injured. They're bringing animals that are blemished instead of unblemished as commanded in the Mosaic Code. And Malachi the prophet, or at least God through Malachi the prophet, reminds the people that the gifts that you're bringing to me wouldn't even be satisfactory to the governor of the country. And you expect me to receive your poor sacrifices gladly. And in the course of reading that passage, I thought of this hymn, Give of Your Best to the Master. It was written by H.B. Gross about 100 years ago in the early 1900s. I thought about singing it this morning, but my voice is a little bit out of kilter today, so I'm just going to read it to you. Give of your best to the Master. Give of the strength of your youth. Throw your soul's fresh glowing ardor into the battle for truth. Jesus has set the example, dauntless was he, young and brave. Give him your loyal devotion, give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master, give him first place in your heart. Give him first place in your service, consecrate every part. Give unto you shall be given, God his beloved son gave. Gratefully seeking to serve him, give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master. Naught else is worthy his love. He gave himself for your ransom, gave up his glory above. Lay down his life without murmur, you from sin's ruin to save. Give him your heart's adoration. Give him the best that you have. In Genesis, we were reminded that God created us. From the dust of the earth, breathed into us the very breath of life. In that passage from Romans, we are reminded that in Jesus Christ, we have been justified. We have been given salvation as a gift. Therefore, since we have been justified, we have peace with God. And in John, Jesus reminded his disciples that they would be given this Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, to guide and direct their lives. That they may have everything that was Jesus's. God has created us. In Jesus, God has redeemed us. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, God strengthens, sustains, and keeps us. Therefore, we're invited to give our life over unto Him. To receive Jesus Christ into our hearts and into our lives as Savior and Lord. To follow Him as closely as we can. And to give of our best to the master let's pray father son and holy spirit wherever each one of us might be in our faith journey this day stir up faith within us whether it is the initial step to become a Christian, whether it is taking another step to recommit our lives as followers of Jesus, or is it simply to set something else aside in our lives so that we as Christians can follow Jesus even more closely and give of our very best to the Master. 
and to do what our closing hymn suggests, to surrender all because you have given us all. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. Amen. Our hymn ascending is number 354, I Surrender All. Please stand as you're able and join in singing. Certainly in the quietness of your own heart and your own soul, wherever you are, you can make a faith decision for Jesus. Some people prefer to come to the altar rail and spend some time in prayer, so always feel free to do that. And if you would like some guidance and direction in your faith decision, please feel free to talk with me or some other trusted Christian mentor in your life. May you go out this day knowing that God is always seeking you 
knowing that God is always wooing you back into Himself in His provenient, justifying, and sanctifying grace. May you go out to serve Him. May you go out to give Him your all, to give Him your very best. Go in the knowledge that God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit goes with you now and always. Amen.